There are subjects that when exposing truth, you feel a sense of urgency in discussing. Things that you know must be discussed immediately for many different reasons. Like when discussing the one world government or the mark of the beast, there was a feeling of urgency the spirit placed on me to discuss those things. And so it was obviously spoken of early. Like my video about Bitcoin and the mark of the beast was one of the earliest videos I made. But often there are other topics that you want to discuss but you don't feel led to at the time. So many different things you want to say, but you don't feel allowed to say them yet. I'm not talking about being allowed by the system, but by the Holy Spirit. When you are guided by him, you can feel him tell you to talk about this or not to talk about this. And this subject in this video is one that needs to be discussed, but it was in his timing, not my own. I have people many times in the comments that literally get upset with me because I haven't spoken about the topic they wanted to hear at the time. But that is not in my control. I try to move as the Holy Spirit moves and I give what he places on my heart. And this topic is something that I have wanted to discuss for a while, but something I have not been led to yet. Though, if you have gone to my website, you would have been introduced to that information there. This is such an important subject because the consequences of being on the wrong side of this information could be disastrous for yourself, your family, your congregation, etc. For many, it may be too much to bear, and they may deny the validity. For many others, it will be a huge eye-opener and may answer many unanswered questions that they've had for a long time. I don't expect everyone to agree, because there are already many different views on this subject. But this biblical topic must be discussed. We are going to discuss Mystery Babylon. Let's begin. So, what is Mystery Babylon? Let's discuss that first. In study, you will find that there are three Babylons. There is the first Babylon, which is the first empire of the world, with the Sumerians. Then there was the Empire of Babylon. This is the nation who took Judah and Benjamin into captivity. And then there is Mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great. In order to understand Mystery Babylon, you must go back to the first Babylon where we see the building of the Tower of Babel, the creation of the first world government and a one world ruler. Now, I have spoken about the Sumerian Empire in more detail in the first part of my History of Religion series. If you have not watched this series, please make sure that you do. But again, to understand Mystery Babylon, you must understand the first Babylon. This was the first empire of the world. It was based in the land of Mesopotamia and ruled by the Sumerians. This was the people that came together to challenge Elohim. They built a large tower known as the Tower of Babel. They built it to challenge Elohim and prove their greatness. This was an empire that was in pure rebellion against Elohim. They came together speaking one language from which they were able to conspire against the Creator. They were under the rule of Nimrod, who was the leader of this world government. At this time, after the flood, they were the inhabitants of the world, and they came together in order to challenge the dominion of the Creator. The book of Jasher chapter 9 says, King Nimrod reigned securely, and all the earth was under his control, and all the earth was of one tongue and words of union. And all the princes of Nimrod and his great men took counsel together. They said to each other, Come. Let us build ourselves a city, and in it a strong tower, and its top reaching heaven. And we will make ourselves famed, so that we may reign upon the whole world, in order that the evil of our enemies may cease from us, that we may reign mightily over them, and that we may not become scattered over the earth on account of their wars. And they all went before the king, and they told the king these words. And the king agreed with them in this affair, and he did so. And all the families assembled, consisting of about 600,000 men, and they went to seek an extensive piece of ground to build the city and the tower. And they sought in the whole earth, and they found none like one valley at the east of the land of Shinar, about two days' walk. And they journeyed there, and they dwelt there. And they began to make bricks and burn fires to build the city and the tower that they had imagined to complete. And the building of the tower was unto them a transgression and a sin, and they began to build it. And whilst they were building against the Lord God of heaven, they imagined in their hearts to war against him 
and to ascend into heaven. And all these people and all the families divided themselves in three parts. The first said, We will ascend into heaven and fight against him. The second said, We will ascend to heaven and place our own gods there and serve them. And the third part said, We will ascend to heaven and smite him with bowls and spears. And God knew all their works and all their evil thoughts. And he saw the city and the tower which they were building. And when they were building, they built themselves a great city and a very high and strong tower. And on account of its height, the mortar and bricks did not reach the builders in their ascent to it, until those who went up had completed a full year. And after that, they reached to the builders and gave them the mortar and the bricks. Thus was it done daily. And behold, these ascended and others descended the whole day. And if a brick should fall from their hands and get broken, they would all weep over it. And if a man fell and died, none of them would look at him. And the Lord knew their thoughts. And it came to pass, when they were building, they cast the arrows towards the heavens. And all the arrows fell upon them filled with blood. And when they saw them, they said to each other, Surely we have slain all those that are in heaven. For this was from the Lord in order to cause them to err, and in order to destroy them from off the face of the ground. And they built the tower and the city, and they did this thing daily until many days and years were elapsed. And God said to the seventy angels who stood foremost before him, to those who were near to him, saying, Come, let us descend and confuse their tongues, that one man shall not understand the language of his neighbor. And they did so unto them. And from that day following, they forgot each man his neighbor's tongue, and they could not understand to speak in one tongue. And when the builder took from the hands of his neighbor lime or stone, which he did not order, the builder would cast it away and throw it upon his neighbor, that he would die. And they did so many days, and they killed many of them in this manner. And those who were left amongst them, when they knew and understood the evil which was coming upon them, they forsook the building, and they also became scattered upon the face of the whole earth. And they ceased building the city and the tower. Therefore he called that place Babel. For there the Lord confounded the language of the whole earth. Behold, it was at the east of the land of Shinar. And this is the story of the first Babylon, a world empire that sought to come together to challenge our creator. And from this empire, we have the pagan gods that the later world will come to worship. The father god Nimrod, who was the sun god, the mother goddess Semiramis, who was the moon goddess, and the son of the sun god, Tammuz, who is the sun god reborn. It's important to understand the first Babylon, because if you do not, that you will never understand the prophecy of the mystery Babylon that was set to come. Mystery Babylon is an end times nation. It is spoken about in great detail by the prophet Jeremiah in chapters 50 and 51. When reading those chapters, he interchanges often with the current Babylon of his day, the Babylon that took Judah captive and the Babylon the Great, the mystery Babylon to come. You can see this because many of the characteristics that he speaks does not fall in with the Babylonian empire of his day. Like verse 23 of chapter 50 says, Babylon was the hammer of the earth, which was not true of ancient Babylon. Or verse 12 of chapter 50 says that Babylon's mother will be sore confounded or ashamed. But this was not true of ancient Babylon. There were many others as well. The prophet Isaiah also speaks on mystery Babylon in chapter 47. And the apostle John speaks of it in Revelation chapter 18. Mystery Babylon is the third Babylon to come. Elohim is very angry with Mystery Babylon and says very specific statements of judgment against Babylon. And so, when trying to understand Mystery Babylon, we must use these characteristics in our understanding. When speaking of this subject, I run into many people that like to say that the Roman Catholic Church is Mystery Babylon, or that modern day Iraq is the place of Mystery Babylon. But I wholeheartedly disagree with those views because these places do not fully align with all of the characteristics of Mystery Babylon. So before I explain what nation I believe Mystery Babylon is, I will go over the characteristics found in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51, Isaiah chapter 47, and Revelation chapter 18. You don't need to write them all down, 
I have listed them on my website for your own review later. The link is in the description box. Here are the characteristics of Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is a nation, not a system. This is according to Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 12, which says, Your mother shall be deeply ashamed. She who bore you shall be ashamed. Behold, the least of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land and a desert. So clearly we see that it is a nation, the least of the nations. In the King James, it says hindermost, which is another word for last. This scripture tells us a few things actually. We see it's a nation, not a system, but also we see that it is the last of the nations. Of all the other great empires of the world, Rome, Greece, Britain, this end times nation, which we will see will be very strong, is also the youngest. In this scripture, we also see that Mystery Babylon also has a mother who bore her, and that this mother will be ashamed of it. These are all characteristics. Mystery Babylon is a nation, not a system. It is the youngest. It has a mother who bore it, and its mother will be ashamed. Another characteristic is that Mystery Babylon will be the hammer of the whole earth. Verse 23 of chapter 50 says, How the hammer of the whole earth has been cut apart and broken. How Babylon has become a desolation among the nations. Then we have Mystery Babylon is the land of carved images. They also were insane with their idols. Verse 38 of chapter 50 says, A drought is against her waters, and they will be dried up. For it is the land of carved images, and they are insane with their idols. Continuing in chapter 51 of Jeremiah, it tells us that there are people who live in Babylon that originate from other countries. Verse 9 of this chapter says, We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her, and let us go everyone to his own country. For her judgment reaches the heaven and is lifted up to the skies. We also learn that Mystery Babylon is located around many waters, and it is abundant with many treasures. Verse 13 says, O you who dwell by many waters, abundant in treasures, your end has come, the measure of your covetedness. Verse 53 says that Babylon has tried to get up to heaven. Though Babylon were to mount up to heaven, and though she were to fortify the height of her strength, yet from me plunder was come to her, says Yahweh. We also learn that the other nations in the world are drunk off her wine of fornication, meaning they are deeply influenced by her. We see this both in Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7, and a Revelation chapter 18, verse 3. Babylon was a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. That's Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 7. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. That's Revelation chapter 18, verse 3. Basically, all the nations of the earth are learning to sin against our Creator through the abominations taught from Mystery Babylon. The book of Isaiah chapter 47 says that Mystery Babylon will be called the Lady of the Kingdoms. Sit thou silent, and get thee into darkness, O daughter of the Chaldeans. For thou shalt no more be called the Lady of Kingdoms. That's Isaiah chapter 47 verse 5. Verse 9 of Isaiah 47 tells us that there is a lot of sorcery and enchantments going on in Mystery Babylon. But these two things shall come to you in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. They shall come upon you in their fullness because of the multitude of your sorceries, for the great abundance of your enchantments. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 9. Revelation chapter 18 is a chapter dedicated to Mystery Babylon. As we are still referencing its characteristics, Mystery Babylon is the dwelling place of demons. It's a prison for every foul spirit. It is a cage for every unclean and hated bird. Verse 2 of Revelation chapter 18 says, And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, 
Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. We read verse 3 earlier. It also says that the businessmen of the earth become rich because of Babylon's abundance of luxury. Verse 7 tells us that Mystery Babylon glorified herself and lived in luxury. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure give her torment and sorrow. For she says in her heart, I sit as queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Revelation chapter 18 verse 7. Other kings and rulers of the earth will have become rich and live luxuriously because of her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and live luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. That's Revelation chapter 18 verse 9. Babylon will have a great city that allow others to become rich because of her wealth. They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. That's Revelation chapter 18 verse 19. Babylon's businessmen were the great men of the earth, and by his sorcery all the nations were deceived. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more, and the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth, for by your sorcery all the nations were deceived. Revelation chapter 18, verse 23. So there's obviously a time where Yahshua and his bride, the church, will no longer be a part of Mystery Babylon. And these are some of the characteristics that we see in these chapters when referencing Mystery Babylon, Babylon the Great. Again, I have left the link to these characteristics in the description box so you can review this on your own. So without me telling you my obvious view, when reviewing all these characteristics yourself, and then reviewing the world that we are living in today, the geopolitical structure, the monetary structure, the social structure, what nation on earth today aligns the most with these characteristics? Remember, we are speaking of a nation, not a system. It is the youngest. It has a mother who bore it and will be ashamed. It is the hammer of the whole earth. It's the land of carved images, and they are insane with their idols. There are people who live in Babylon that originate from other countries. It is located around many waters, and it is abundant with many treasures. It has tried to get up to heaven. All the other nations in the world are drunk off her wine of fornication, and they are deeply influenced by her. It will be called the Lady of the Kingdoms. There is a lot of sorcery and enchantments going on there. It is a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. The businessmen of the earth become rich because of her abundance of luxury. This nation glorified herself and lived in luxury. Other kings and rulers of the earth will have become rich and lived luxuriously because of her. It will have a great city that allowed others to become rich because of her wealth. Its businessmen were the great men of the earth, and by its sorcery, all the nations were deceived. What nation during these last days does this mystery Babylon align the most with? For me, a long time ago, when I studied this, it was amazing how much the United States fit within this prophecy. The United States, the youngest of all empires ever. A nation that was born from England, who is its mother. A nation that literally is the hammer of the earth. Ironically, this nation in modern times is referred to as the world's policeman. Full of carved images and a population that is obsessed with idols and idolatry. It's located around many waters. It is a country that many people live here, but they do not originate from. It has tried to get up to heaven. Though, I don't believe in the lie of outer space and that they landed on the moon. But either way, they have built rockets attempting to leave this earth. And what other nation is known by Lady Liberty? And think about it. What is one of the biggest exports of America? Its culture. Our music, our television, and movies. 
our values are all exported to the rest of the world. No other place on earth can change the values and beliefs of a person more than the United States. The rest of the world is drunk off its wine. What other nation on earth has made more rich people than the United States? And is New York City still not the great city, the financial capital on the earth? This is a very big topic to really grasp and understand. It gets even deeper when you truly look under the hood and what the true reason for the creation of this country was. It was a nation used to challenge and rebel against the creator. It was a nation that used its financial, military, political, religious, and social influences to create its own modern day version of the Tower of Babel. This land of the free actually represents the land of the free to sin. There is literally no other nation in history or in the future that can match all that has been said about Mystery Babylon like America does. No other nation. This is an understanding that as believers we should be fully aware of. We should make sure we are not attaching our hearts to something that is completely against our creator. There is nothing we can do about this. Understand, this is not about taking physical action. You cannot reverse this. It was prophesied and foretold of. The importance of understanding this is so that once you understand where this nation fits in prophetically, it helps you understand more about its future. There are many warnings that are given to us, and we are told of many prophetic things, many judgments that will come upon Mystery Babylon. But this is not our battle to fight. The reason we must understand this is so that we are not deceived by her and not aligned to something that is against our Creator, just because we were born in to certain indoctrinations. In scripture, we will see many warnings on how we should deal with Mystery Babylon. One warning that I specifically live with continuously is from Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, which says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins, and lest you receive of her plagues. Come out of her, my people. When I first read this and had the understanding, I said to my wife, Oh my goodness, we got to get out of here. It's time to go. But we had very little money and had no clue where we would even go. And I had no direction yet on how coming out of Babylon would have been possible for myself and my family. I realized I was acting through fear and not guidance from our father. Obviously, if you are able to, you should come out of her physically. But that is not possible for the masses. Does that mean that we are doomed and destined to be part of her judgments? As this understanding is unveiled to you, it is not a reason for panic. I took that message very much like I take the message of not being of this world, but I directed it more acutely to the United States. You see, I could leave the United States physically, but if I was still drunk off its wine of fornication, I would still be living through her influence, regardless where I lived. Come out of her, my people, is removing yourself from all of her mindsets, influences, and ways. These are reasons why I prefer to use the Hebrew names of our Savior and Creator rather than through the Babylonian tongue. Why do you think English is a language that is taught all over the world? It is literally a redo of the first Babylon. Now, I realize that a question that many people may have from this discussion is, should I move? Listen, I mean, if you're able to, move. I know I would. But the most important thing is to come out of her mentality and ways. Do not live through her influences and how she fornicates. Stay away from her idols. Do not worship Elohim the way it has influenced you to. Align your life more with the word than with Mystery Babylon. One side of my family is from Jamaica, and you can see how America has changed them versus the values they held in Jamaica growing up. And that is a consistent story for the majority of people I know who have moved here. That is not by accident. They are drunk off the wine of our fornication. You see, I realize that this is a message that may be hard for many to accept. So many people rooting for the politics of this country, believing Trump was sent to save the country. If they understood this subject, they would not be expecting the Most High to be supporting Mystery Babylon. Or people believing in the Black Lives Matter movement that will bring equality. Or what about pastors preaching a prosperity doctrine that teaches their flock to attain as much of Babylon as possible. People believing and trusting in this Babylonian-based nation while claiming a belief in the one true God. This understanding concretely allows us 
mental awareness of exactly why we should not be participating and believing in the politics and values of the land. From the inception of this country, it was influenced by Freemasonry and the occult. The first president of the United States was a Freemason. The ceremonies of the induction of this country are all Masonic. It's not by accident. Look at all the buildings of Washington, D.C. It's a little too much to go into in this type of video, and honestly, you don't really need to go that deep. This is just knowledge that should help us clean up our hearts and what we are attached to. In the word, we are warned continuously about this end time nation of mystery Babylon. But many of us either have not been exposed to this truth or refuse to accept it. Look at the values of this country and ask yourself, does it align with the Bible? Or is it completely moving in a direction of rebellion against it? Ask yourself on the back of your dollar bill when it says, in God we trust, what God are they referring to? Maybe you understand more on why the Eye of Horus is on the back of our bills now. In order to continue on in the book of Revelation, I needed to cover this topic so that it is more concretely understood. We are in the last days. We are not trying to change the world or even save it. We are saving souls and preparing them for the kingdom of Elohim. We are breaking bondage and deception and living boldly in these last days. Do not take my word for anything. Please go and study on your own. But in the end, as Father opens your eyes and unveils more truth, live through these words. Come out of her, my people. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I would like to give a special thank you to those who have donated and contributed to this ministry. Please understand your contribution and support are a huge blessing to this ministry. Thank you for your obedience to Yah's call on your heart. I'm humbled by your support and I'm very, very thankful for you. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.